So we're gathering this uh, name, and without really any regard to how it uh, displays on screen, uh, I want to do a little bit... Um, first we'll display it on screen, actually. Let's do that, and then we will clean it up. What I want to do is only have it accept, for example, letters and numbers, but not symbols. So we'll do that cleanup in a moment. That means that this line here, this alert, I'm going to comment it out because we don't want it to pop up one time and go away. We want for the name inside of the username object to be displayed on screen. And I showed you I want to display it in more than one place. Well, anything that has an ID, right, the pound sign, can only be used once per document. We have a, a class that can be re, reused multiple times. So we'll go back to the HTML and sort of put like a placeholder everywhere we want the name to appear. So we'll put a placeholder in HTML with a specific class. And then we will write code that wherever that class appears in the HTML, put into it the person's name. So let's write the HTML part first because that's easier. We'll go back to index HTML. We need to find the part where it says welcome. That's at about line 36 or so. I did a search. It might be easier for you to search rather than scrolling up and down. And what we want to do there is add a placeholder class. The way that will work is I want it to say, welcome, comma, Victor. I want it to say some, uh, some person's name. So um, we'll put here a, a span right after welcome. A span is related to a div. A div is an empty container. The big difference of why we would use span versus div is that div is a block level element. It will push to the, to the next line the other things next to it. So if we use the div here, it would push itself to the next line and welcome would be on its own line and my name would be below it. A span is in line and it'll stay in this line. Next, in order for us to be able to target this, it needs an, either an ID or a class. And we've already said and we already know that a class is something that we can reuse. call this username. So I'm going to copy this span and I can paste it anywhere else I want my name to appear on screen. We have the uh, art screen and the computer screen where it says something like, you know, take an art class, Victor. Computers. Learn computers. Victor. So I want to go over to my other two sections and find where their welcome message is at and just paste that in. That placeholder <coughs> will be reused. So over on at about line 84 or so where my art classes section exists. I'm not there. Uh, there. Take an art class. I'm going to remove the exclamation point. I can add it later. Uh, and uh, here, take an art class, Victor. So all of this will be replaced with whatever the person types. And now on the computer screen, find your computer section. And where it makes sense, we will paste that in. Learn about computers. Put that span. Yes. Do do what? Because specifically, this is a placeholder. It's it's HTML. Span is HTML. So we have to do it in the HTML file. 
So I've got a span and it's got a class. Now when I save that, I'll go back to the index.js file. So this will be replaced with what the person types. We'll go back to the index file. JS. And the line that was saying alert, it's going to be something else now. We're going to say with the jQuery selector. What are we trying to select? Dot username. Anywhere where that class exists, we will do something. This is very powerful. You know, a lot of the modern web, it, it runs on top of jQuery. It's just so useful. Shortcuts. It lets you target elements more efficiently. And it lets us do methods, it lets us do commands on those things that we're targeting, that we're selecting. We have the .html method, the HTML command. Let's write some HTML inside of this object. JavaScript sees that span as an object. And what we want to do then is write some HTML in that object. So, this is where we're going to have <coughs> local storage.username. Whatever saved in the local storage object, write it as HTML in that object, that spam that's waiting for us. Now before we go test it, uh, I didn't really mention it, but notice up here we did welcome plus username. Concatenation. We are building a string. We're writing the word literally welcome first, and then we're writing whatever the person's name was. We built a string. Right now, it's going to, for example, up on welcome, it's going to write welcome Victor. No comma, no space. It's going to literally write just what's in the username. So we should, we can then also add the comma, the space, the exclamation point, all of that as we put this string together. So before saying the name, we will first, with a string, quotes, comma, space. Let's write the comma to whatever's on screen and a space. If we don't write a space, it won't put a space in the HTML. Yes, that's coming up right now. So then, after this string, we're going to add to it the name. So that's plus. In this instance, plus, it's not exactly like 1 plus 1 equals 2. In this case, it's 1 plus 1 equals 11. A 1 and a 1. It's not 1 plus 1, 2. It's a 1 and a 1, and 11. So we're putting the comma and the space and then the person's name on screen. I also want to put an exclamation point. So after the person's name, plus, let's add more to the words that will appear, in quotes, exclamation point. Welcome, comma, space, John, exclamation point. Take an art class comma, space, Jill, exclamation point. Let's test that out. I will test it in the browser. As you keep doing your testing, you should figure out that it doesn't just work to refresh it, unfortunately. You have to run, you know, you have to compile a new version of it. You have to do run browser again. So you either do run Android or you do run browser. Doing run Android runs it on the Android device, and run browser does it on the web browser. I think for me it's faster to do it in the browser than in the device. I'll open the console right away. Any of this default stuff, I'll just clear it. <coughs> I'm going to go back to About, <clears throat> click Personalize. I will type a real name, Victor. I'll click OK. 
no alert because I, I commented it, of course, but my console sees my name. And now when I close that and go back to the home screen, welcome Victor. And when I go to the art screen, take an art class, Victor. And when I go to computers, learn about computers, Victor. If I go to put another name again, just put any other name. It saw the name. Welcome, Ahmed. Take an art class, Ahmed. Learn about computers, Ahmed. So any name. Anywhere where we have that span, uh, we write HTML into it. Meaning we could get pretty fancy here and we could write HTML tags here in this line of JavaScript which will get rendered as HTML in that box. If I write the M tags, they've got to be in quotes, not outside, because that expects JavaScript. This is not JavaScript, it's HTML in quotes. So for fun here, I'm going to write the person's name, and I'm going to wrap the M tag, italicized, opening and closing. I can't close it right there, I have to close it in that quote. It will then process this as HTML, that's what that jQuery command is doing, upon that jQuery object that it found. And it will write emphasis, italicized, italicization, if that's a word, onto the name. So you see conceptually opening and closing tags, but notice how I had to write it. It had to be in quotes. This is a, a very powerful concept that we will use extensively later on to write HTML uh, from JavaScript, dynamically created JavaScript, or dynamically created HTML from JavaScript algorithm. Emphasis or italics. So I'm going to load this up. Now you may say, why doesn't it still say my name anymore? We'll do that soon. Every time we run it, it forgets the name, but we'll fix that in a moment. So I'll put in a brand new name Billy. Click OK. Do that. Welcome, Billy. And take an art class, Billy. I don't know about computers, Billy, and it's italicized because it was processed. It was processed HTML code because of the jQuery method. do the part about only accepting letters and numbers, and then we'll deal with the part about it doesn't remember my name. I thought, I heard the instructor say that this is data that is saved permanently. It is. It's still being saved there, and I'll show you where it saves it. It's just that we're not retrieving it. When the app loads, we never said to retrieve it. We saved the name, but it didn't retrieve it. So you've seen that I saved Billy. If I run it again, Billy is not going to appear, but I'll show you where that data is being saved. It's being saved in one of the one of the internal storage areas built into the browser, built into the device. I'll show you that in a moment. I'm just going to run it one more time, fresh in that it'll erase the name, but it's still internal. So, okay, no more Billy. But the way you can see, where is this local storage data being saved to? It's in the console. And we have, under application, application tab, a place where all local storage data is being stored. So if you switch your tab over here from console to application, storage, local storage, 
in the current project, username data is being saved, Billy. So it is remembering the last name that I saved. A plain old var, var, a plain old variable, goes away as soon as the app closes. Local storage, variable, quote unquote, doesn't go away. It's still in there. So we need to retrieve it in a moment. I want to retrieve the name as soon as the app loads. If I've ever saved the name, I want to retrieve the name so that it's visible there and waiting for me every time I load up the app. I don't want it to forget my name. It didn't, but I never retrieved it. <coughs> so the key is local storage dot username. I created a key. I created a cookie. The value of that cookie is Billy. So we'll retrieve it in a moment. Uh, let's do one final thing here about cleaning this up. Okay, local storage. Get the username that we saved. And then also dot replace method. There's a, there's a JavaScript command that will let us find and replace data inside of that data that we don't want. So we've uh, strung together more commands. Local storage is basically, on the first time up here, it was local storage save data. Here now, local storage retrieve data. We don't have to explicitly say something like save local storage, get local storage. Local storage, shorthand, you can save or retrieve simply by saying the name of the, of the cookie. Dot replace. We're going to search inside of this data, and we're going to then uh, take out the parts we don't want. This is going to be a regex, a regular expression. Slash, <coughs> square brackets, slash g comma quote end quote you can go to the website regularexpressions.com or something and there's a whole tutorial on what this regular expression is it's a very complex way for us to search inside of a string and in our in our case also replace what we're about to say here is Let's look for some values in here that are forbidden globally. Let's search the whole data, because if we don't have that, it'll stop as soon as it finds one instance. Search for a set of characters we don't want throughout the whole name, and then replace it with nothing. So that's basically taking out exclamation points or uh, periods, dashes, all of those things that really shouldn't be in a real name. So the character set that we're saying here, what we do want to keep is A-Z. We want to keep the letters A to Z. We also want to keep the letters A to Z, capital A to Z. We do want to keep the letters. What I just said here is we're about to replace. These are the forbidden characters. Replace them with nothing. OK, we're going to say keep the letters, but everything that's not a letter is what we're going to replace. So we'll back up, and not is the caret in this case, the shift 6. The little up arrow thing, it's a carrot. <coughs> that's saying not. So anything that's not A through Z lowercase, A through Z uppercase, is the forbidden characters. Replace them with nothing. And 
and that should be it. So let me. The G is global, meaning meaning browse the data and keep going after we find the first instance. Don't stop. Yes. Um, I'll do that one moment, but that's a very good point. Sometimes we have a hyphen in our name, so we have to also include the special escape character for the hyphen. And I'll add that one in, in one moment. Let me just confirm that this one works. And maybe my name, I am putting, you know, uh, <coughs> John Jr., J.R. Dot. I want to keep the dot. Maybe I have, you know, an, some other kind of symbol that is necessary for my name. So now you get into these issues about, okay, we need to really think about what we're what we're deleting. But in my case, at least, uh, let's say here, I'm going to go back to add a name. I'm going to add John99 with a couple weird symbols. Okay, so you're seeing here, I'm adding weird symbols and numbers. And I'll click OK. It saw that. And then on screen, only John. We stripped out everything that wasn't A through Z. Other ways we can further refine this string, this search, if we also want to include numbers. Maybe it is, you know, John 99. Maybe I do want to keep that. Okay, say 0 9. We're also going to keep numbers, 0 to 9. And if we want dashes, we have to do backslash s. <coughs> This is the way we say a back, uh, say a dash, because we cannot use dashes already. The regular expression, this replace, has to use a dash to say from here to here. So we have to have a special character, backslash s, the dash, dashes. If we want to do include also make dots, OK. I have to look that one up. I don't have it in my notes. But there's a way to say, OK, dots are OK. It's backslash something. We have to look it up. And so I'm going to let that process, and now that'll take numbers and dashes. And as that processes, what I can do is uh, learn regex, regex1.com. So this is a whole website to teach you just how to use regular expressions, how to search strings, replace them, and all of that. We have the keyword backslash D to deal with digits, any non-digit, any character. If we want a period, it's a backslash dot, <coughs> backslash S, any white space. Hmm. That might not have been the dash then. So somewhere here, we're going to do the dash. It's, it's regx1.com. regex include dash. Oh, okay, backslash dash should be fine, but you can also try putting it in the beginning or end of the character class. If you want to put the caret? You want to include the caret? I didn't say that. You want to type the caret? Well, I'm saying <coughs> They both uh, should work because it's still about not. It's still about the opposite. Target the opposite of what we're dealing with. So I'll give that a try. Just a dash at the end, backslash dash. So here, in theory, we should be able to allow numbers and the slash, or the dash, I mean. 
so you have to figure out with your own algorithm what will be allowed. Right, let me give this one a try. Uh, I'm going to put in, let's see what happens. I'll put cyborg dash 009. So it's, it sees cyborg 009 and then the result cyborg 009. If I was doing with a dash. So I, I fix that up a little bit more here, backslash s, backslash dash, and it'll include dashes. If you also want the period, backslash dot. <coughs> this is a problem with usernames. Uh, so many people are online now and everyone wants the same username and now I've got to be 02, or I'm going to be creative, I'm going to be victor.campos. Well, I have to think about that because then now I'm going to remove that dot from a person's name because I'm saying here dots are not allowed. So this is the annoying thing that we have to figure out as developers, uh, our use case, our, our, our users and our demographics and such. <coughs>